Good morning everybody. Today I will be discussing about herpes simplex virus infection during labor. I will present a case of a lady who is in labor and she had herpes simplex infection in the past. Currently she does not have lesions on the genitalia but she has some prodromal symptoms. Ok, let us proceed forward and present this case and we will have at last some questions and uh, we will answer all those and solve all those questions. Ok. A 31 year old G3P2 woman at 39 weeks gestation arrives at the labor and delivery area complaining of a strong uterine contraction of 4 hour duration. Her membranes ruptured 2 hours ago. Ok, here is a lady who is 31 year old. This is her third pregnancy and she has two living children. And she is at 39 weeks gestation and now she complains of a strong uterine contraction and which, is, which has been from four, 4 hours and her, la and her membranes ruptured 2 hours ago. She has ruptured membrane for 2 hours. She has a history of herpes simplex virus infection. She denies any blisters and her last herpetic outbreak was 4 months ago. She is taking oral acyclovir. She notes a one day history of tingling in the perineal area and this is important. Ok, let us pay attention here. One day history of tingling in the perineal area. What does this signify? This signifies the re recurrence of the herpes simplex infection. Though, although she has no blisters and no ulcers in her genitalia, but she has since one day tingling sensation in the perineal area and she is on the oral suppressive acyclovir. Ok, this is the prodromal symptoms and we are, we are more keen to understand this thing because once you have the lesion or the prodromal symptom of herpes simplex virus you must go for caesarean section. You cannot do the vaginal delivery. Ok. And consider if we do not have uh, either uh, prodromal symptoms or lesions on the vagina, cervix or genitalia, we can go for vaginal delivery. But here the case is different. She is tingling in the perineal area and this is our important point. Ok, we proceeded further with examination and her blood pressure is 110 upon 60 millimeter of mercury. Temperature is 99 degree Fahrenheit and heart rate is 80 beats per minute. This all looks quite fine. No problem with heart rate, BP or pulse. Her lungs are clear to auscultation. Her abdomen reveals a fundal height of 40 cm and she is at 39 weeks of gestation. Fine, this is, this is all normal. The fetal heart rate is 140 beats per minute, reactive and without distillations. Ok, it seems better. The uterine contractions are every 3 minutes. She has a good uterine contractions. The external genitalia are normal without evidence of lesions. The vagina, cervix and perianal region are normal in appearance. The vaginal fluid is consistent with rupture of membranes showing forning and alki alkyotic pH. Ok, these all things are normal, nothing to be considered, nothing serious here. But the main thing was we should notice about the lesions on the genitalia or prodromal symptoms because they will determine the management of this patient. Ok, and with this case we have two questions. What is your next step? What is the most likely diagnosis? What should be our next step in such case? And the next step is of course counsel the mother for caesarean section. Make her understand that if she goes for vaginal delivery in the case 
then she may have neonatal encephalitis, chorioretinitis, and which are the serious complications. So we will not opt for cesare oh sorry, vaginal delivery in this case. And the most likely diagnosis is recurrence of herpes simplex infection. Okay. Okay, let's present the summary of this case. A 31-year-old G3P2 woman at 39 weeks gestation is in labor and her membranes ruptured 2 hours ago. She has a history of herpes simplex virus infections and is taking oral acyclovir suppressive therapy already discussed and this is just the history. She has a one day history of tingling in the perineal area. These all are the key key things in this case and answers to our questions. Next step, counsel patient about risks of neonatal HSV infection and offer a caesarean delivery. We must offer a caesarean delivery section in such cases because there are risks of neonatal transmission during labor. During labor, there is very very less chance of transplacental transfer of HSV infection. It's mostly or most of the times during labor, the virus is transferred from maternal genitalia, external genitalia to neonate, and that causes the fatal complications. Okay. And most likely diagnosis, herpes simplex virus recurrence with prodromal symptoms and that prodromal symptoms were the tingling sensation for since one day and that's the thing to be considered here. Okay. Again let us make it more clear if a patient presents with HSB active lesion or recurrence what our approach should be towards such patient. And uh, for diagnosis, herpes cultures or PCR are not useful. They are not useful in the acute management of pregnant women who are present in labor or with rupture of membranes because uh, we do not have time, and we want quick decision, either to go for vaginal delivery or for cesarean cesarean section. In such case, there is no role of herpes cultures or PCR. These are just uh, for antenatal diagnosis if she had in her second in second uh, trimester then we would have gone for these things but now she is in the labor and our main concern is her and she is in labor and she has very good uterine contractions and our main consideration is either to go for delivery vaginal delivery or cesarean section and for that we will look will do meticulous inspection of the external genitalia, vagina, cervix and peri perianal area and we will also look for presence of prodromal symptoms ok and no lesions or prodromal symptoms if there are no lesions or prodromal symptoms then there is less risk for viral shedding and uh, the lady can opt for vaginal delivery but once again, pay attention to no lesions or prodromal symptoms. There should be neither lesions nor prodromal symptoms. Presence of prodromal symptoms or genital lesions suspicious for HSV. What type of lesions are suspicious for HSVs? These are blisters, vesicles which are in clusters more than 3, 4 or they are in groups. Such they are painful genital ulcers. Such lesions which are suspicious for HSV, we should pay our attention. Okay. Now at last, acyclovir may decrease the symptoms during the time of labor and decrease the need for cesarean delivery. But this is only suppressive therapy. This acyclovir decreases the duration and decreases the viral shedding, but doesn't alter the immune response of the mother doesn't get you rid from the HSV infections. Fine. Now I hope we have better understood how to approach to a patient who is in labor and she had in past HSV infection and is a case of recurrent infection. Okay.
thanks for watching this video and hope you have understood the case okay thank you once again